Hello everyone and welcome back to what is season 3 of our Evian save. So, fortunately the end of season gave us some funds and things like that uh, to get us back into the positives for now. Um, we're not great as overall balance is already down to 160 after we got 1.1 mil. So, not the best financially, but things have happened. We've brought in a squad. I don't know if it's better than last season, but we've changed the tactic a little bit as well. And we've gone for a little more youth this year, though, so, so that we can try to hold on to some players and grow instead of trying to go right up again, which uh, which was my goal last year. So hopefully, because they're younger, they're not going to be as good. But there's growth and there's development that's going to happen, so hopefully that works out. And we have some interesting signings to retrain in other positions. So, a lot going on. We still need one signing, one kind of crucial signing left, which I have a little bit of money to spend for. And uh, And yeah, I'm excited to show you guys the new team, everything going on and talk about our chances for this upcoming season. So guys, it's time to talk tactics first. Um, this is our new tactic. If you guys do remember from last season, I did make a few adjustments to similar style of this, where it was uh, with Shadow Strikers and stuff like that. And I just feel last season, too often, we there was a little bit of disconnect between the team, and it wasn't as connected in the play. So I've decided to go with this, uh, now where we have a little more connection between the play. And on top of that, I also took some inspiration from uh what was the the actually no it's not out yet come to think of it <laughs> it's not out yet uh the three of the barrow tactic i made which is similar to this uh which i took inspiration i made i took inspiration from that from when i was playing this earlier episodes and i did this three four two one i then decided to move for the libero tactic i went uh i went five one two two but i had two wingers out wide i, I tried some different things with my three libero attacks it didn't always work right but then i tried um and i was like oh, i need a better connection it's not working like the the play isn't great the triangles all the, 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 the tons of stuff wasn't good and then i decided hey let me go and uh try it like how i did with this where it's kind of similar like you have them pushing up it allows you to be more aggressive it worked like a treat this system so I did that with the two shadow strikers, the complete wing backs. Um, they're similar to the obviously, um, similar to the style I used in the bombing wing backs tactic, which I did do in that. So I've done something similar there. Um, I also liked how wide center backs worked for us last time around, and I also felt that I could get the same style of play as I did with the liberos in these wide center backs, but not the exact same. It's kind of hard for me to explain because if you haven't seen the uh, the three libero tactic. But if you've seen the three libero tactic, you'll understand a little better of what I'm saying. But pretty much how it is, is that these the center backs play like kind of wide center backs in the three libero system, but it's not totally the same. It, it's hard to explain, but I need, I need to show you both. But I don't want to spoil that one. But no, it's come out. It has come out. Yeah. Sorry, I'm recording all of this before the holiday season, and uh, I've lost track of when stuff comes out. <laughs> but... But yes, uh, so this is this is kind of the way it's supposed to go. Uh, obviously, the same thing. Very aggressive goalkeeper. Um, this libero being aggressive in these areas, pressing heavily there. These guys, I want to. If you see here, they're going to close down more, but they're going to ease off tackles. If you remember last year, I felt too often. Um, there was a few times that they got beat and they didn't like do it. They in essence were standing there, didn't do anything. So I want them to be more aggressive. I want them not to tackle as much because i think sometimes i remember koibis one of the last games was like right here on the edge of the box and he got beat because he dove in and then boom striker runs in on a goal so to ease off the tackles but get closer mark the guys tightly so they get tight to them so they don't get free shots off but don't dive in so they don't get caught now same thing with these guys just to deal better with the wingers because i felt like sometimes we get hurt a lot by switches last season so the idea was to uh not close down as much but in essence, make sure you're marked tighter. So they just mark tightly to the guy. So they just stick close to him 
and make it hard for them to pass the ball. I don't want them to get beat by tackling too often, and I don't want them to get pulled out of position by cr closing down as much. So the goal is they sit more in their shape when someone runs into their zone. Boom, they track them, track them till they go further in, and it lets these guys track more fullbacks or wingers if the team is playing with two up front. I feel like that just works a little better that way. Um, obviously, we can adjust that in games. Say they're say we want to press higher, we can put them more aggressive and stuff. But that's the idea is just to hold their shape better and deal with that. The Volantes, pretty similar. I felt sometimes they were lacking, so I just took off some of the stuff for them. If you remember here, they had a lot more to do. This time, I want to be more defensively sound, because last season we struggled defensively, so they're, they're a lot more uh, defensive responsibility. Again, trying that same thing, having them be more zonal, not be as um, aggressive, because I want to sit in more of a zonal shape where we're not man-to-man -man pressing. I also think we don't really have the fitness levels for that. Um, that's the other thing that I've noticed just with signings this season, which is what I've had to adjust. So if we go to comparison, all positions, um, where is it? Uh, work rate. Yeah, the work rate's pretty low as well, which is another thing. Um, where, I think it's in physical, right? Stamina. We don't have a lot of stamina. So that was the other thing that I was like, we don't have tons of stamina, so we don't want to kill ourselves, which is why I'm having us trying to defend in this more zonal shape, which should be more successful. Also, I can only really get so many players. Like, we barely have any options. I look at, like, I go to all the free agents in the world, I click open, there's like 50 that I can scout. Like, it's just hilarious. This team is such a low reputation. No one even wants to join this team. I missed out on so many signings, too. You should have seen the quality of players that I was getting in on trials from the beginning has just gone down, 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 and down. It just slowly is going off a cliff. It's really, really sad. There was two center mids who I had looked at who were like five stars. Like, they were the best players we'd ever seen. Both One went to Red Star, who just got promoted. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. This is ridiculous. Um, and then these guys, to help with the width, are going to drift wider and be more aggressive. So I want them to start the press. So I want them to be aggressive and engage early on. So they will they will step be aggressive because they'll work on the opposing sixes and stuff. And also because there's going to be a bit of a gap now. Like in here, you can see here, this shows there's a gap. So because of that gap, we need them to be really aggressive and in these areas here to deal with all that stuff since there's the going to be a gap. And then finally... Um, be an aggressive striker. The same thing. Pretty, I think it's the same exact responsibilities. Yeah, same exact responsibilities as last year with those guys. So there's some similar roles. The wingbacks are the exact same pretty much um, as well. It's just the only thing is uh, they don't cross from the byline and they don't have to run wide with the ball. So it's, uh, it's pretty similar stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of the same things here and there, but also slightly adjustments. Uh, I want to go shorter passing play to defense, work the ball in the box. All these same things, looking for the low cutbacks that we want. We want the team to run in the defense. You roll it out to the center backs. There are key guys in possession. Um, we have a higher line, but they engage the press. Then we have our block of seven, which should be able to deal with things. They do get stuck in and stuff. So there's things like that there where just each individual player has instructions, but there's overall arching instructions as well that help with it. Sadly, uh, Sunan is injured for the first game of the season, which does suck. But uh, I don't think he's actually played in preseason yet. No, he played a he played two he played a, a few games, but yeah, he got hurt pretty early on. But yeah, that's kind of what we're gonna do tactically. Oops, this season I have to still do penalties. I forgot about that, but that's kind of what we're doing in terms of that. So I think we'll get into the transfers now of who we brought in. So if we go last season, um, Martelat left uh red star came in and he's like hey i want to go and obviously wanted to leave because they're in a higher division and he wanted to leave so i was like all right i can't stop you thus he left we only got 130k which does suck but what can you do on top of that we brought in these guys from the academy who the who uh they want us to bring in but uh this guy was terrible so i just released him because he was absolutely atrocious and then we've kept these other two. So they've stayed along, but yeah, he's he's terrible. So I just let him go. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it. what happened towards the end of last season. Now, this year, we haven't uh, let anyone go. I've got people in. This guy doesn't have any... He's just the loan fee um, for it instead. But uh, in terms of we see the... Oh, free transfers. Released players. 
So these are all the guys that were released. So we released Patrick, which probably not the greatest idea to release him, but you know, I just wasn't too thrilled with him because his versatility would have been good between the Libero. Uh released him as the striker. Lineart, who we released as well. And then Al Hamiri, who I just was so underwhelmed by. He had such an amazing preseason and then just sucked. Um last year loan deals, all these guys left. Um, we did try to get this guy in. We did try to sign him. We had a contract agree and everything. But um the team he went to, Ansi, uh, offered about like three times our contract that we could offer him. So that didn't go too well. Um but now this season, these are all the players we brought in. We brought in a lot of guys. So we had Sane signed on a pre-contract agreement. He's a wide center back. Not the greatest of all time, but he's got really big height and he's got some really good physicals that I really like. He's definitely slower, so he could get caught out, but he's not going to be a star player for us. He's just going to kind of be this guy that we can bring on a little later on. And as much as he can't really play libero, it says, um, there was the fact he can step forward and do things, which I kind of liked about him. Offers some versatility there. So not the greatest signing, but it's how it goes. We have Joris Mendy as well, who's been signed to play the backup wingback role. I like him for a lot of his physicals. Really, uh player that's going to get up and down do a lot he does have good determination so that's going to help with the just teaching the younger player stuff and having some good stuff there teamwork could use some work uh same with well but you know it's better than nothing uh to just have someone who can do that small fast player good tackling and decent marking and stuff what i was hoping for with a very aggressive player but we're going to have him work on that too um this boy is one i'm really excited by he is from leon they released him and we picked him up he has been unreal in preseason this man has 10 goals, 3 assists in 10 preseason games so far, playing in the shadow striker role. I'm very excited for what he can offer us come this season. He's not the starter, he's the backup, but for what this is and what he can offer, it's really, really exciting to see this stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. And obviously he's going to be a potential player. He's only 19, so he's got a lot of room to grow. This is another potential player we've brought in from Spain. We found him. The Malian connection was the one that helped us there. We have signed some new staff who have some African um, African knowledge, which has helped us sign a few African players. Um, there's one more that you'll see later down the line. But uh, he's played three games at the Shadow Striker role and picked up six goals and one assist. So he's been quite good. Now, he's not perfect. He's got some stuff he's got to work on and improve and... He's definitely struggling with his new position. Training hasn't been great for him recently. So, recent, I think the latest session he was doing well, but he struggled in the beginning of training at first. He's not adapted perfectly well, so he has gone down a bit. But, again, also, we don't have the greatest of facilities. Like, that's the other issue here. We don't have amazing facilities. We have six, five and six. It's pretty weak. We don't have the money to invest in them as well. So, it's really difficult. But we're going to keep on doing what we can. I mean, you can see here, uh, Hot Prospect, we've signed him. He's now the Hot Prospect, which is good to see. But, yeah, that's kind of a, another... Um, he's really exciting. I'm really excited to look for He's also played deep center back because he's 6'5". That's the other crazy thing. He's 6'5". So he's got some height to him. And his heading is not very good. But um, that's stuff I think we can work on as time because he's only 18. Yeah. So we've got some young players in. There's another young player I'll show you, which we'll go to here. Hugo Rauch, uh, he's a 19-year-old goalkeeper from Strasbourg who released him, so I brought him in to be a goalkeeper. Hopefully he can grow and be someone in the future. But, you know, another high-determination player that you'd like to see we bring in. We just gotta just gotta find some of these guys because they want to improve the, um, the overall like feeling of the squad, the attitude of the squad becomes a much more determined squad, and you kind of just want to see that, and that's what we're looking for. We've brought in Hamazoi, uh, Hamazawi, uh, Moroccan Belgian. Uh, I'm excited by him as he is very good at either side. He's not good two footed play. He's not two footed, but you know what? He can play either side pretty well, which offers great versatility in terms of him being able to play there. It's a lot better than Leinard, who was awful last year. I think he's a lot more of a put together player. The stamina and work rate needs some help, but you know, for what he is, I'm excited and he's done decently well so far when he has played. Um, Excuse me, another player that we've brought in is Falun Niang, who is going to be uh, the starter at the center mid position. He looks really, really good, and I'm excited by the likes of him. Very good player, for sure. He's 30. We signed him for two years. 
which could be a risk, but, you know, I think he's someone that could be very solid. He's got a strong personality, and I think he can hopefully help affect the locker room and just be a really good presence. I mean, you can already see he fits well into the locker room on top of that. Um, he does need to improve his teamwork a bit, and he is definitely need to work on stuff in training. I don't think he should be improving his strength, they say that. I think I've been working on his work rate or his uh, marking or something, but... He's been good, too. He's been really solid in preseason, which is a nice plus, and he's going to be one of our better players come the next season or two. Um, finally, into the loans, uh, but I think we'll first go to Mascherano. Um, 22-year-old from Sporting's affiliate in Gambia, right? Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Bissau. Their affiliate there. Now, he's got four determination, so I know, but there's just some stats here that I'm just kind of flabbergasted by, and I just feel like there's a shot. Like, there's he might be good. Like, I don't know. There's something there. He's done well uh, for his youth, like, youth national team and stuff. So he did really well in AFCON, and he's done pretty damn well in Guinea-Bissau when he's played in the first division and stuff. So uh, why not give him a shot? Why not? Like, we'll take it. We gotta go for this shit. He's on, like, no money. He's had a good academy system before, so we brought him in for a few years. We'll see if something happens. It's more of, like, you know what? Why not? He's worth a little money. We got him for free. It doesn't hurt. Now, some players I'm very excited by. Uh, Scotty Beng Begway. I don't know where on earth he's from. Where is this company? Reunion? I've never heard of this place before. Where is this? This is in Africa. It's just a French colony. Cool. Ludovic Ajork is from here? What? Oh, he, oh, I was about to say. It's like, that's like our guy's name. Um, Ajork is from here? What the hell? I've never heard of that country before. But look at this kid. Look at this guy. Um, as an advanced forward, he's got a lot of like, drib lots of like dribbling, finishing, first touch. The Flair is fantastic. Off the ball is fantastic. Acceleration, balance, agility, natural fitness, stamina, work rate. There's a lot to like about this kid. A lot to lot to like. And I'm really excited for it as well. He's done really well too uh, for these guys already in the lower levels. So he hasn't played too much on the other ones. But, you know, I'm excited for what I see here. And I think he'll be a great striker to have. Finally, two more players brought in a Czech Republic center back who will be our right center back for the season. He's not amazing technique, but you know what? Heading, marking, tackling, and positioning are all big ones that are very well done. He's got good concentration, makes good decisions. Aggression could be better, but it's okay for how we're looking to play. He's decently quick with some pretty strong physicals. I am slightly concerned by the strength, but with a fairly determined mentality and some other stuff that he's got, I'm quite excited to see what he can do. And anything, we can always make him a normal center back to help out with some of the issues he faces. And we can even do stuff in terms of giving him individual instructions to help suit him a little more. But I think we might we might make it so that he doesn't get on the ball a lot and he passes away quickly. So those are some things to do, which we probably will. But some good stuff there. And then finally, a player I'm very, very excited by. We've brought in Mayaka, Mayaka o, Okuka. O, Okuka? Okuka? I think that's how you say it. He's going to be a uh, Saguna Volante for us. He can't tackle very well, but that's fine. And he needs to work on some of his strength and stamina. But he's a good-looking player with versatility. And he can be a playmaker as well, which is nice to see as we can do some of that stuff. He also is, is good at a Mazala, which is forward-thinking role there, which is nice because that's also a good one to see. But I like the look of him. Definitely a good player. He's got a decent mentality on him too for being balanced. And he gets forward whenever possible, which I really like on top of it as well. So I'm excited a lot by him. <coughs> Overall, we have a very young squad. Um, if we look at the general, the average age, we have the youngest squad in the division. So that could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, but I've gone young. I've gone very, uh, we're, we're very, <laughs> we're not very, uh, very heavy. We don't have a lot of height either. But you know what? For me, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. We the we have this one of the lowest salaries in the entire league, and we have one of the lowest values in the entire league. Oh my god, the average squad value 
Oh wait, average player transfer value in this division is four point four million. <laughs> oh my god, we have so we're so small. Oh my god, we're such minnows. Well, that's the team for this season so far. In the season preview, we are predicted to finish fifteenth, just like before. But there's a lot more teams in this kind of stretch we're pretty even with, which is nice to see. And on top of that, we are going to bring in one more player, which is going to be that center back, uh, libero type player. Um, I'll have to adjust the scouting budget a little bit. But as you can see here, I've given us a little bit of funds, about 1K in the wage bill left to get that final signing in, which is fantastic. So we've got money. We can do some things here. Depending on how we play, I also might leave it and just say, hey, we're good enough for what we have. We have obviously some academy players here. We've got this guy who's going to be a part of the first team this season. He's an academy player. We do have three more in the U19s. Uh, I've decked, I've literally dropped all of our academy players, which has helped free up the wage bill and some costs. We have no longer any staff down there. Um, I'm going to have to bring in a first, I'm going to have to bring in a coaching staff for the 19 since I think we're going to use it, but no more staff on the second team uh, to no more. We don't need anyone there so far um i don't think either of them play games but depending on which one if either of them play stuff uh i mean they, they had a friendly one they lost to us um yeah i don't think either of them entered I, oh no i don't think i i think i didn't have enough players to enter a division but whatever they don't play many games so i think we're gonna get a u19's head coach just so those guys do try to develop a little bit but Overall, we don't really need to worry about that. And if you guys do look at just even how the board are feeling, everyone's really happy with me. The transfers have been really, uh, really good so far. Um, yeah, they're not too happy with the youngsters, but you know, overall, there's a lot of happiness with the transfers and a real good feeling about it, which is nice to see because that's the important thing. We got to try to keep everyone happy and stuff because if not, we're not going to be in a good spot. Yeah, they weren't happy with some of the people going in. Patrick is one I'm slightly concerned by that I did let go. But again, I also did try to resign him, and he wanted a lot more money. And I look here, he's on less money than he was with us initially. So, <clears throat> how it goes sometimes. And also, I just, I don't know. I didn't feel like he was, perf was perfect for the role. So, we'll see how things go. I'm obviously interested to see what happens in this first game. And I think we're going to get into things now. So, we aren't the favorites, so we'll go balanced. This one I want to work on using mentality a little more on. Um, in terms of players, you're going to be on the bench. I don't want to start some of these guys like these three, cause I haven't really got much time with the team. And also Dorval's done really well. These two definitely deserve the start. They've been great. I think everyone else. Oh, one person to talk about Ruke. This man has been destroying it in preseason. He's been exceptional. So I'm really excited for him this season because he's looking like a top quality player. Um, I don't match on international duty and he's still injured. So I think we'll leave everything for there. Um, I think we do want to do this though. Say squad available for the U19s 90 minutes because you are 19. Yep. So now he can play for the U19s as well as you. We need to make sure you are available for it. Because this will be important for these guys. They will get good game time while we're not when they're not playing, which won't be a lot. Mascherano as well. I don't think he needs to do that yet. We'll leave that all for those two. But those guys can get time on the U19s, which is important. I don't know if he'll play every game, but I don't know. I don't want to say to give him the availability just yet. We'll see how things go this season, but those two definitely need to be given it as they're not going to be playing a lot. Um, but yeah, I still want them to be a part of the first team and get the training. I will adjust the training so those other guys do train to the first team just so everybody's training with, uh, with the best possible team and using the best possible stuff as we don't really have that many players in the team. But yeah. That's how things are going. I'm pretty excited with the team. I'm happy with the lineup. We're going to go to the balance mentality for today. I don't think we really want to make any other changes. I don't know what the assistant suggests. He suggests doing that, which I think there's definitely some stuff that I would do, but they haven't played as much, and I don't want to really risk anything with that. So. I don't know. I just They haven't played yet. They're not tactically fit with the system, so I don't want to force it. Especially because I think this team is good. I'm pretty sure these guys came down last season. Let's take a look quickly. Yeah, they're predicted third as well. I think they were relegated. Yeah, they were. Not a fun start. We play these guys in the Nemes next game, I think, or something like that. So it's not a great... It's not like a... Hi, guys. Welcome to Season 2. They have Diata and Kazri. 
How is this fair? This is a loot of the infant. What is this team? This team is so much better than ours. They, literally, just three players in their team are better than anyone we have by a fucking mile. Oh my god, these guys should be playing in fucking first division. Look how good he is. Still, he's fucking he's insane. All right, all right, yeah, he's short as fuck, but still, he's a great goalkeeper. He plays with the national team. Fuck's sake. My god. Let's hope their coach is an idiot. But he might have been newly hired, which I'm assuming he would be. Yeah, it shows you how good they are. They actually have jerseys. Well, it's going okay so far. We're the only team to have a shot, which is good. We're we were going to be more defensive this year, which is the big thing. One of the big reasons I want to ease off those tackles and do that a little more, where we're going to hopefully be much stronger in the defensive sense. We don't have to worry about that stuff. We can kind of sit and do our shape. And so far, it's working in this game. We don't have more of the possession. It's not terribly in their favor, but, you know, we've, we're the ones that's gotten the shots. We're going to keep encouraging the team, tell them keep going, keep working hard, guys. Everyone's doing decent. Ruke's not doing one of the most amazing of games, but, you know, everything's pretty good so far. Ratings are looking all right in terms of the the possession and stuff. Uh, we're They're not having very good possession in our, in our half. They're struggling to connect passes, which is good to see. We still are maintaining it. I mean, we've obviously picked up the yellow card, but no, I'm happy with this. I'll take nil-nil at halftime where we've had all the shots. I can't complain. Especially since not everyone is played all three seasons. I'm happy with this. I'm, I'm taking it. I mean, we are the underdogs in this. We are not expected to do amazing this season, and I'm not complaining. I think, because we are playing more counterattack, I think it might be good to look at Dorville and see. Um, obviously, he's quick. But I think we'll go this sub. We'll just do that for now. Otherwise, I don't think I want to touch anything. I mean, Yang's on the yellow, so the only thing is maybe we do that. Mm, we'll wait. I just don't want to risk him on a yellow. My only concern. <sighs> How many fouls have we made? Go back. 7-7, seven to seven, so not terrible. Not terrible, man. No, no, we'll stick with this. We'll stick with this. Just the one sub. Oh boy. Well done, Ruke. Delego. Nice. Diang. Piccolo. Could this be a world class substitution to start the half? Could this be. Oh! Oh! Penalty is one of its world class substitution to start the half! Oh my god, we've got the chance! Come on. I haven't done the penalties yet. I should. I forgot to do that. Who is it? Gallego, center back style. Yes. Yes. Hammer it home, Gallego. Give some big praise to the team. That's fantastic, boys. What a great way to play so far. I like. I'm scared to touch anything too, because we've just done. It's worked so well so far. Did we get a short corner working? Back to him. Got the cross in now. Go yourself. No, the penalty! No, the penalty! <laughs> Step of Gallego. Two, two. Oh, coca has got this one. Change takers. Change the foot. Come on, coca Come on. Give us a 2-0 lead. Oh! Damn. Damn, 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 Kokolo. We gotta fix it. I gotta do the penalty takers and set piece takers. Um, I forgot about that because I hadn't finished the squad. I always do it once I have a final 11 because then I know, like, who who I have. Because I always get concerned to do it before. Just give more praise, though. They're doing fantastic. You guys are doing amazing so far. I think we'll go double switch, though. Just, we'll get Kokolo off. He's probably feeling a little rough. So we'll do this, and we'll do this.
Oh, wait, actually, also, let me just swap Diamande, these two, because he can actually use his left foot. Diamande is not as good. I think Diakite will probably use a sub, and Diang might be our final sub as well, which might just be two things we do late on. But I'm really, really happy with this performance. This has been incredible. I mean, look, look, at, the, look at the stats column. They haven't got a shot off. As I said that, they finally had a shot. Ruke is looking pretty tired. Oh boy. Alright. We've won it. Nice job into the box here. Can we get... Good. Nice one wider. It's alright. Come on, can we get the goal to seal it? Get the goal to seal it. Ruke, can you get the cross in? He can. Head it up. Hamazawi. Yes! That's what I'm talking about! The young man, the teenager from Lyon, scores on his debut. The two new signings combined to put us 2 0 up in a game we were never even considered to be in. We were never considered to be a part of this from the start, and what a great one. Diakite is going to come off, and then it looks like the Lego is pretty tired, so we'll just go with that one right there. Give some more praise, and wow, what a great job. I mean, this has been incredible from these boys. I like, look at the XG and stuff. Come on, I don't want, I don't want to concede. I don't want to concede. Come on. The ecstasy of a third goal would be ridiculous. Lovely passing so far. Can he get the cross in? Can he get the cross in? He can. Tits. Oh, it's blocked. Oh boy. Diamante, what were you thinking? Just get in position, guys. We'll take that. That's what I want to see. We got the bodies back now. We're not pressing. We're not always risking it. We just got the bodies back. And look at the bashing triangle. Look how nice that looks. Oh, yes, baby. That's how we fucking do it. 3.56 XG, 23 shots. Oh, that's how we fucking do it, boys. That is a much, much better one. Outstretched arms. That's a comprehensive fucking victory. That is brilliant. Turn dominance into victory. Yes, that is what we do. I'm so happy. I'm buzzing. So let me let me build it. Let me build it, boys. Let me, let me get my time, take my time, get the players in, build that team, and boy, I will make you a, a league winner. Oh, my God. We get another shot. Come on. I don't know if we want to go up this year because we might get dumped right back down, but, you know, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. I'm so, I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing from that. Uh, So... Your team doesn't have what it is to stay up this season. Uh, I wouldn't rule out staying up. No, 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 no. Where, where's, where, where can we throw some shade? Yeah, look a little closer to home. There we go. Very, very pleased. How do you think? Uh, he did well. I just want to take him off for the old card just for the safety of it. He was terrific as well. Uh, you battled and got the Gover. Um. Yeah. New signing, da da da, debut today. I'll be from the bench. First you. Don't want to, yeah, don't want to rush him. He's going to play that well. He'll start over Kokolo. Wow, 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 wow. What a start. What an absolutely fantastic start. Let's see, what do, what do the fans think? What are the A plus, baby? <laughs> That's what we want to see. What a massive start. I mean, that is like insane to start the season that way. What does the board think? A plus as well. It's such a big way to start. We needed that confidence because I was scared with our run to start the year. I mean, look who we face. We face Nancy, Villafranche, and Nimes, who, again, like we look last season, these guys 
were very good last year. Um, take a look at it. If we go last season, we had Nancy, who, even though did badly, are still a very good team. These guys who finished right next to us, and the Neems. Like, we're literally, with these guys, just started to get a relegated team. So it's not an easy stretch to start the year by any sense of the any sense of it but with that being said we now have two games we i'm going to play these four out and we have these games ansi and gaf who if you guys don't remember last season where is it knocked us out of the cup on penalties so we have a bit of revenge to go for so good story of revenge one a player who denied us and joined ansi and two a team that knocked us out of a cup last season so we got a we got a little good sense of revenge we can do there, and it will be our first game on TV against Ansu, which will be awesome. We'll get some money for the game. I don't think I think we had a few on TV last year. Yeah, we did. So we had a final three on TV, which is great to see. But uh, we have a first TV game of the season where we get some good money from that, and I'm excited for it. So I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, remember to like and subscribe. And if you guys want to catch up on future episodes, be sure to hit that notification bell as well. Now, if you want to see the last season, uh, all of last season, the final two seasons, you can. Uh, our promotion season one, as well as our struggle season two, where things started off so well and then just slowly kind of fell off the edge. You can do that all by following the playlist at the end of this video or in the description below. If you do want to check out that uh, triple libero tactic, they'll be under the tactic section. And I might even do a test with this tactic, which is not the same, but slightly similar to it as well, if you guys are interested to see that one. So once again, everyone, thank you so much for watching. And I'll be catch you guys in the next one, where we take on ANSI and GAF, GFA.